welcome to our very first uh, academic success webinar series. We're so glad that you guys joined us. Um, this will be the first of many we hope to produce throughout the academic school year. Um, as always, you can come and find us at the Academic Resource Center. We're going to give it just a minute or two for anyone else to join. Um, if you have questions, you can go ahead and add, type those into the question box. We will have a Q&A session at the end. Um, we will start by introducing ourselves, um, but let's just give it one more minute for some people to join. Okay, guys, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll um, start by introducing ourselves. I am Ashley Bray. I'm the Disability and Learning Skills Advisor for the School of Continuing Studies. Um, so I work with all of the students in the Bachelors of Arts and Liberal Studies program and all of our Masters of Professional Studies program, um, as well as our Doctor of Liberal Studies program. Um, and my office is downtown, but sometimes you'll see me up here on the main campus. Hi everyone, I'm Annie Balat. So I'm a learning skills specialist on main campus um, and we are located on the third floor of the Levy Center directly next to the Women's Center as well as the LGBTQ Resource Office. Um, so my role, I predominantly work with students one-on-one -on, -one on any type of academic skill, strategy, talking about time management, procrastination, organization. Um, I also oversee our foreign language um, tutoring services. So if you're in a foreign language course from beginning to intermediate two, um, feel free to come in and request a free foreign language tutor. Um, and I also conduct workshops and update our website. And we've got plenty of resources on our website for you to browse and use at your own um, dispense. So certainly um, preview those and feel free to download any of those resources or handouts that you feel it would be helpful. All right, so before we get started, we're just going to go over, I know we shared a little bit about what our roles are, but um, a little bit more about our office and what we do in our office. So we have a two-fold mission in our office. The first is disability support. Um, so maybe you had academic accommodations in high school, in your undergrad, you're now transferring over to grad school. Um, so we provide accommodations for students. There is a, a process and some documentation guidelines. They're all outside outlined on our website, um, academic support at georgetown.edu. Um, you can find out more information there. But if you feel that you might need some academic accommodations or you had academic accommodations before, um, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, I do all the academic accommodations for the School of Continuing Study students. Here on main campus, um, Dr. Hollihan works with all of our students uh, with maybe mental health needs and learning disabilities. And our associate director, Amy Malarkey, works with students with uh, chronic health conditions and physical conditions. And the other part of our office mission is the academic support side. And Ashley and I share in this role. Um, again, she works at SDS and I'm on main campus. So I work with students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Also, we try to have at least a one uh, once a month in-person workshop um, that is centered around an academic theme. So definitely stay tuned for those announcements as well. Um, in regards to other academic support, like I mentioned, our website has great, great resources on there for you to download. As well, you can certainly schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me to talk through any type of challenge or just concern that you have. Um, and then same goes with me. If you are a School of Continuing Studies student, then you might feel that you might need some more, a little bit more academic support. Um, stay, feel free to reach out to me directly and we can schedule an individual consultation. Um, and as part of our kind of academic support resources, um, which is our new initiative, which is this webinar series. And as I said, um, we will be having one webinar every few weeks throughout the semester um, and into next semester. So stay tuned for more on that. All right, along the lines of staying connected, we have two great platforms of social media that we use to really broadcast all of our events and just good study tips on a weekly basis. Um, we have a Facebook page as well as an Instagram page. So you can see the handles at um, the bottom of that handout on your screen. So I would encourage, highly, highly encourage you to follow us. Um, again, information sent out on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis, about news, announcements coming from our office, just good daily tips that you can have at your fingertips. So that's really, really important. All right. So 
today we wanted to start our first webinar series by um, talking a little bit about time management. So hopefully at this point in the semester, you guys should have some sort of system um, in place. Um, and what we really like to say is what works for you doesn't necessarily work for everyone else. So make sure you have a calendar, a planner, um, using your Google Calendar that's connected to your Georgetown email. Um, maybe it's the calendar on your phone or an app. Um, whatever it is that works for you, you should be using that. Um, and that should be something you're not just looking at once a week or you know when you're in class. It should be really something that you're kind of incorporating into your daily routine. Um, so with that being said, we just wanted to do some brief, uh, a brief overview of time management strategies um, and a little bit about how you can maybe set up your calendar or planner to really work well for you. And then we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive into um, study schedules um, and kind of how to plan that out throughout the week. All right, so just like Ashley mentioned, again, using some sort of organizational tool or a combination. So if you really like using a planner and also a Google Calendar, that's a great, that's a great start, but definitely using some sort of tool. Um, our recommendation is to input all of your quest, uh, tests, quiz deadlines, assignment papers, deadlines, all of that information into your calendar as soon as possible if you have not done it already. That's a really, really important tip. Um, also, making to-do lists and setting reminders in your phone for tasks that you need to complete or meetings that you need to attend during the week is really important. Don't force yourself to remember everything and have mental notes for it. That's why we have laptops, that's why we have computers um, and phones to really help us remember those important tasks. Um, also, we're going to talk through how to prioritize tasks based on upcoming assignments or tests or deadlines to figure out what needs to be accomplished on the day-to-day -day basis. And again, if you're not necessarily sure where to start, we've got a great activity that some of you may have already completed. It's called the 168-hour worksheet, and it's listed on our website under academic resources. Um, the 168-hour activity um, is focused on figuring out where does your time go when you figure out how much time you spend in class each week as well as outside of class preparing for your tests and quizzes and projects and all of that good stuff. It also captures your routine responsibilities, which basically is everything else going on in your life as an individual and as a, a student on campus. So it captures how much sleep you're getting at night, how much interaction you have throughout the week, um, what types of, you know, it's how many hours you spend on errands and meetings and um, commuting to and from campus. So that's a really great activity to figure out where is your time going and how can we trade time and trade um, time amongst activities in order to spend the appropriate amount of time studying, talking with professors, clearing up misconceptions, and really use our time purposefully. So Annie mentioned our 168 hour worksheet. So I went ahead and pulled up our website. This is our website. Um, again, it's academicsupport.georgetown.edu. Um, so over here, if you're looking for academic accommodations, you want to go to the disability support tab. But most of the resources that we're talking about today, you can find under our academic support tab. So if you click on that, um, we have a lot of different resources. But uh, right up here, we have monthly calendars that you can help uh, stay on track. If you go to academic resources and click on time management, the 168 hour worksheet is the first worksheet you can find. We also included a planner on there for you guys. And there's lots of other resources that we have on our website that you can take a look at, explore, and find out what works best for you. So this might be a little bit of a sample. Um, this is actually the calendar that we have available in our workshop, our, our website that we um, have included and we just filled it out. Um, this is a really good way of just kind of visually seeing what your uh, week looks like. So we have all our classes um, marked out. Um, we include it workouts because it's important that you're staying healthy and you're staying active. But one of the reasons that I really enjoyed this is because it has um, a priority side on the left-hand side. So um, we can talk about this a little bit more, but it's really helpful to kind of keep in mind as you're planning it, your week and your calendars are really getting busy. There's lots to do on campus. We know you guys how busy you guys are um, to keep in mind of what your priorities related to your academics are for um, throughout the week. 
I think this is a really great worksheet as well that you do on a weekly basis. And again, I'm a visual person, so I really like the hands-on, the planners, those types of organizational tools. If that's not for you, that's perfectly fine. But for someone that really likes the hands-on organization, this is really helpful that you can write in and draw and kind of figure out what commitments do you already have and then pinpoint areas in your week that you can really dedicate to setting, which is what we're going to transition to. Um, I highly recommend doing this on a weekly basis, Sunday night, Monday morning. Take 15, 20 minutes just to figure out what does the week look like? Are there any additional meetings that I need to add in? Um, are there other commitments that I need to remember? Just to make sure that you're staying on track and you don't get to you know, Wednesday at 2 p.m. and think, oh, the whole the half of the week is gone and I haven't necessarily accomplished what I wanted to during this week. So doing something on a, on a weekly basis, Sunday night, Monday morning, would be really, really beneficial to you. All right, so once you kind of have what calendar planning system works best for you and you kind of start inputting in um, those important class, assignment due dates, um, you know, jobs, internships, volunteer hours, whatever it is, um, you can start using that as a foundation to create a study schedule. Um, so a couple things that you guys want to keep in mind when you're creating a study schedule. Um, really look at low and high periods of concentration. So for me, I, when I was in school, I could not do anything past like 8 p.m. I was exhausted, I was ready to Netflix, hang out with friends, did not want to read an accounting textbook, did not want to write a paper. Um, when I worked the best, it was usually in the mid-morning, maybe around like breakfast time after I got some caffeine into my system. So I tried to plan a lot of my studying before then. Um, again, keeping in mind those priorities for the week. So what, what do you have in terms of classes? Are there exams? Are there papers? Is it an important interview for an internship? Um, is there a study group? And really thinking through on maybe Sunday night when you're starting to plan your week ahead of what does that week look like? Um, another really important thing that we talk about a lot here is building in free time. Your schedule should not be so jam-packed that you can't move anything around. Um, and we think it's really important that you guys take some time for yourself, not only just to enjoy this college experience um, and get to see your friends, but also it really helps you reset for the week and it helps your brain reset. You're a little bit more intrigued by the subject areas that you're studying when you have a little time and breath away for it. The one part that I really like about these tips is the study environment. I think that sometimes um, fouls students up because they're trying other places on campus or trying to find good study spots on campus and they just keep saying, you know, it's not working or I just continue to procrastinate. So really finding a good study environment is key to creating a good study schedule as well. So if you are someone that um, does focus well with others around, figure out a spot on campus that makes sense for you. If you're someone that needs you know, total isolation and really time to concentrate, maybe use one of the study carols in Lao and reserve one of those spots out. So even changing your study environment can make all the difference in the world. All right. So now we're just going to talk a little bit about some time-saving tips before we kind of get into the activity. Um, so, like we said, take a few minutes each day um, just to look at your schedule in advance. It kind of helps get your mindset for the day. You have a little, it's hard with the day so busy that you forget what you have to do the next day. Um, so those are just a good way to help you start your day. Um, make a list of all the things that you want to accomplish that day, that priority is from the day, right? Um, we're realistic. We realize you're not, there's only 24 hours in a day. You need to be sleeping some of those. Um, so you're not going to get everything done. So if there's things that you need to do that maybe have carried over from the next day, you can adjust your schedule accordingly. Um, organize your physical space. Um, for me, this is really important. So when I get done to, to study, I always have to make sure that my desk is clean, that I feel like I'm in a comfortable environment. So um, organize your physical space. That really helps you kind of put you in that mindset. You know, Ashley, the one I really like to is the use your waiting time. And I talk with a lot of students and they say, 
you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in between class isn't enough to get anything done. And I'm sure we've all said that at some point, oh, I've only got this small chunk of time. It's not enough to get anything done. It actually would be a great time to get things done. So if you have that, you know, 15, 20 minutes in between classes um, or that time that you're sitting on the bus to school or the time that you are sitting on the metro to and from an internship, use that time to really dedicate to studying or looking at flashcards or thinking about how can I, maybe I can take five minutes to plan out what I want to do when I get to campus in order to really tackle this research assignment or this large reading load. So I think um, thinking about in your schedule, where can I use that waiting time or those in between kind of increments of time that we typically think, well, that's not enough time to get anything done. Think about actually how can I use that time to be successful. And Annie, that um, really leads me to the, my, one of my favorite phrases, which is you can't, don't steal time, trade it, right? So those little bits of waiting time, maybe you can trade it for, you wanted to go have dinner with friends, but you really have to study for a quiz. Those time in between classes, those 15 minutes, those 20 minutes really add up. Um, so if you're able to use that time effectively and trade it in, you can go have that dinner with your friends or you can go do something else. Um, so that's one kind of, good rule to live by when you're thinking about your schedules for the week. Okay, so we have a mock-up schedule here, and what we're going to do is just kind of walk through what maybe you guys can start doing um, on your Sunday or Monday or whenever it's appropriate for you to start planning your schedule. Um, so right now we have, it's just a Sunday through a Friday schedule. We'll leave your Saturday to do what you want. And we've realized this is a pretty light schedule. I think all of us would like this schedule, but we're going to build in some additional commitments. So right now, the only things that we have, um, we have an Arabic class that looks like it's on Monday and Wednesdays around 11 to 12, oh, and a Friday. Um, you have an accounting class on Tuesday mornings from 8 to 9.15, so those 8 a.m. classes rough. can be killer. Um, and then it looks like you have a sports management class um, on Wednesday evenings from 5.30 to 7. Um, so we color code it. Color coding is something that I do in my schedule. It's super easy to do. We have a great online workshop on our website about kind of getting into the nitty gritty about color coding, um, if you want to go check that out. Um, and then we also have red. So red kind of draws your attention. That's when our assignments are due. So it looks like you have a paper on Wednesday due, and then you have a quiz on accounting on Thursday. Ooh, rough. And so I think that's something you guys can relate to, something due every day. Maybe it's not something, it's multiple things, and it can get really overwhelming, and we can feel really stressed out. So this is our baseline. So from here, we're going to use some of the tips and tricks we just talked about, um, and I'm going to attempt to fill it in. And we'll see how well that goes. <laughs> okay. So we've, we've decided we have a few other commitments so that we have to add to our schedule. So it's Sunday night. I'm thinking through, okay, what does this week have ahead for me? What do I have planned? And I forgot that I have a meeting with my dean on Thursday afternoon. So let's see if Ashley can use her tech skills. We're going to abbreviate. We like abbreviations. <laughs> Okay, so meeting with my dean on Thursday afternoon, got to make sure that I attend that. Probably going to put a reminder on my phone because I definitely don't want to miss that appointment. Okay, um, I also decided that I'm going to visit CAPS on Wednesday afternoon. So I want to make sure, I already made the appointment, just need to make sure that it's added to my calendar. Mm, I think I've lost my... Appointment. Okay. And I think we had some. Are we good? I made a spelling error, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. And I think we had some professors' office hours, right, on Tuesday that I wanted to make sure. Sorry, guys. We're having some technical difficulties. Bear, bear with us. I've lost my mouse. Okay, well, you get the point. We're adding additional commitments to our um, schedule. Again, doing this Sunday night, Monday morning, whatever works best for you, okay? Okay, all right. So then thinking through everything that you already have on your calendar for the week. All right, we're back, we're back. <laughs> um, and then pinpointing the areas in your 
day that you have dedicated towards studying. Okay, so then the other chunks in your day. So as you can see, Ashley's kind of highlighting with her mouth. All right, we've got some time Monday morning to maybe do some work. To, uh, Monday afternoon after class would be a good time. Oh, look at that, getting fancy. All right, getting better at it. And you know, see Tuesday afternoon before the meeting with the dean, we have some time. So again, this helps you kind of pinpoint the areas or the times in your week when you can dedicate to studying. And this is really, really important. Again, so we want to make sure that we're planning ahead. Okay, we want to make we know that we have a paper due Wednesday, we have a quiz and accounting on Thursday. So I don't want to wait until the last minute to start preparing for those things. So I need to figure out what time on Monday or Tuesday or even Sunday can I dedicate to studying or tackling those types of assignments. Okay. All right, so now that we've pinpointed areas in the week that we dedicate to studying, it's really important that you're, you're super specific about the things that you want to tackle during that time period. Why? Why would that be important? Well, it's important because we don't want to spend time prepping for what we need to study. We don't want to spend an hour of our dedicated two hours of studying to say, hmm, let me flip through my syllabus, let me figure out what things I need to do, let me get myself organized. We already want to be organized as we enter in that time that we've dedicated to studying. So I recommend listing two to three specific things that you want to tackle during that time period. And no, don't just say, I know Ashley listed study, but don't just say study on your to-do list. So say, what class are you studying? What types of, what material are you reading? Are you reading chapter one and chapter two? Are there other specific pages that you need to read? Um, are you gonna do a homework assignment during that time? Do you need to make flashcards? So being really specific with things that you wanna tackle is gonna make that time more dedicated and more directive for being productive rather than wasting time prepping or thinking about the things that you need to do during that time period, okay? Um, we also recommend using the 45 um, 15 minute rule, okay? And by this we mean study for about 45, 50 minutes and then take a break for about 10 to 15 minutes. Study for about 45, 50 minutes and then take a break for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? So we're gonna chunk our time that we've actually dedicated to studying. Why would this be helpful? Well, research actually shows that you're more productive during a set period of time. 45, 50 minutes is kind of peak prime time for retaining as much information. And then breaks are really important so you can reset, refocus, maybe take a step back from what you've been looking at and kind of reading over for the past 45, 50 minutes and allow yourself to really maybe retain the information, kind of think through the information that you just read and give yourself a chance to reset and refocus. Those breaks though, unfortunately, should not be Netflix and it shouldn't be social media because that can really just kind of cause a rabbit hole effect and we end up two hours down the road looking at some Instagram page that we have no idea how we got there, okay? So breaks should unfortunately be boring or it should just be something that doesn't deter you from getting back to studying. So our recommendations could be a meditation app or a podcast, listen to it for about 10 to 15 minutes, getting something to eat, going to take a walk, um, listening to music or maybe even playing a musical instrument. Um, I've had a few students that say they like to clean during their break because it actually doesn't deter them from getting back to studying because they only like to clean for those 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and it's something that they say, okay, I'm done with this break and I'm going to go back to actually studying. Okay, so that's also something to keep in mind, thinking about how can I study I'm going to break down my study time that I've dedicated into 45 minutes of really productive study time and then take a 10 to 15 minute break. So I think another thing, and I apologize about the awful uh, <laughs> clip art, me trying to use draw. Um, another thing that I think was really helpful for me is that when I studied, I never got anything done in my room when I was studying. I would clean or I would turn on something from Netflix. I was like, it's just one episode. Um, or I would end up talking to my roommate. And so for me, and part of that, you know, that tip of recreating that testing environment, I found places on campus that were studying. Um, so maybe you need complete silence. Go to the library, right? There's quiet floors. That's a good place to do it. Um, maybe you can study with a little bit of background noise. I was one of those person people. Um, so coffee shops or downstairs in the Levy Center, they just redid it. It can get a little noisy at times, but it kind of gives you that interaction so you don't feel so isolated. Um, Healy Family Student Center, I think, is another place that's a great place to study outside on the patio is really nice during the day that I don't think many students take advantage of. Um, 
um, so you can get some outdoor studying done. And then there's always, if there's places in the neighborhood, um, a good coffee shop, but don't feel that you always have to get studying done in your room. Look for other places where you know you can be successful. What about studying in bed? You shouldn't be studying in bed. Uh -huh. Because anytime you want to do that, you end up turning on Netflix or taking a nap. And if you're anything like me, the naps are 15 minutes and then turn into an hour or 15 minutes. Right. Um, so shouldn't be studying in bed, shouldn't be really studying like on a couch or any place like that. Really make it kind of your own area to separate it from that fun time. Um, because you don't want to study when you're hanging out with friends in right. the same places. Right. And again, we've already accustomed ourselves to relax in bed and to look on our phones and to watch TV. So if you're going to try and force yourself to study in bed, you're actually just probably going to fall into those procrastination traps. Okay. And like Ashley said, we really want to set up our study environment like our test taking environment. So we don't take tests in bed. So we really should not be studying in bed. The other reason with this is it will help you de-escalate the anxiety you may feel as you enter the classroom when you're about to take a test because you've already put yourself in a study environment that replicates that test taking environment, okay? But if you start studying in bed, start trying to read in bed, as soon as you enter that classroom in a test taking environment, you may start to feel a bit of anxiety because you're not used to that type of setting, okay? So even a small change of changing your setting, going to another place on campus, finding a great coffee shop around um, the university or in DC would be really beneficial to you. Okay, so I think we're going to get to the Q&A portion. Um, and so if you guys have any questions, I am, oh, it didn't, it all stayed. Uh, let's undo this so you guys can see Q&A. But if you have any questions, go ahead and add them into the chat box, and I'm going to try to uh, pull that up. Okay. All right, so someone asked about um, helpful apps. Hmm, all right. So we definitely have a few that we recommend to students. Um, Note-taking, we talk a lot about note-taking and how important note-taking is in class um, during your lectures. And how important it is, part of this is also part of your study schedule, is you should be reviewing your notes that you take in class immediately after class or as soon after as possible. And to do so, Notability is a really great app to use. Why do you like that app, Ashley? Um, because you can audio or you can record while you're typing your notes at the same time. Um, as always, if you're going to record a lecture, you need your professor's permission. So make sure you ask, um, ask first. But the reason I like it, especially if you're uh, learning a language, one of the biggest tips for learning the language is being able to talk it out. Um, and I find for me, I like just talking out a lot of my studying material because it helps me recall the information a little bit better. So you can take the notes, but at the same time, maybe record a story that you can remember or record an acronym that will help you remind you of it later. Um, and especially, I think, for those foreign language uh, students, this is a great app for you to practice your vocab words on. And self-control is another good app that we recommend to students. So this is really dedicated for your phones and for your laptop to um, allow you to block certain websites and certain um, social media social web, media platforms, all Amazon, of that. Netflix. So you can actually block it for a certain amount of time. And regardless, if you try and turn off your computer or break your computer in half, it will not allow you to access those particular websites. So if you really struggle with, um, you know, searching on eBay, the next great pair of shoes or going on social media, and you really just need to get that out of your kind of study environment, but uh, self-control is another good app that you can use. So one of my other favorites is called 30 for 30. And essentially what it is, it's a calendar, but with timers attached to it. Um, and there's color-coded subjects, and you can, they're movable, um, they're, you can edit them and fill them in. So maybe you have a lot to get done that day, um, editing a paper, studying vocab for a foreign language, maybe you have to do a Skype group meeting, and you really need to make sure that you're staying focused and on time. You can set timers, and don't for, forget to include those 15-minute break timers in there, um, to really help you stay focused, and that way you're not worried about spending too much time on something, um, and you can really kind of help plan your day that way. It's a great app to use. 
The last one we'll mention is a to-do list app, and I think it's actually called... It's called to-do list. It's called to-do list. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but it helps you kind of keep track of the things that you want to do that you need to get done on a day-to-day -day basis and or weekly basis. Again, I'm more of a paper pen kind of person. If you saw my office right now, I have a lot of post-it notes around with things I need to tackle. This is just a way that you can translate that information to your phone so you can carry, around, carry it around with you wherever you go. Great. Um, so I think the next question is, how many hours per week should I be studying? Oof, I, we get this question a lot. I think a lot of students, they worry that they're not putting enough time into studying. Um, so here's kind of a frame of reference. Uh, most professors recommend two hours of studying for every one hour of class time. I'll say that again. Most professors recommend two hours of studying for every one hour of class time. So, Annie, what if it's like a really, really hard subject? Like math, for or, me, or it would be math. Econ. Yes, econ too. Um, so, in that case, three hours of studying for every one hour of class time should really be the goal. So, think about how much time you feel like you are putting into your coursework, amount of time that you're spending outside of classes, and think about do you kind of match up with that frame of reference? All right, um, so our next question, and this is a really great one. Um, I've tried to implement some of these strategies a few times and they're still not working. What should I do? All right, so for this one, um, don't give up on it, right? Um, habits, I think science says it usually takes 21 day period for you to consistently incorporate a new strategy. Um, we don't expect you to take all of this information and implement it all at once. In fact, I think that's really overwhelming and I would not encourage you to do that. But pick one or two manageable things. Think about what your kind of week looks like, what your crazy schedule looks like, what your life looks like, and say, what are one or two things I can start incorporating? Um, maybe it's just making a better use of waiting times, right, and adding that into my schedule. Um, maybe it's really using the two-for-one study rule when I'm planning out my study schedule. So pick one or two things. Give it a, give it a good 21 days. It should be almost a month. Um, if it's still not working, then come see one of us. You know what I've actually been doing as a professional, as a staff member here at the Academic Resource Center, and this is a strategy that can translate to students, is estimating the amount of time that tasks will take me. And what I mean by that is if my boss gives me a project to work on or my coworker asks me to review some sort of paper or project, I have to think about, okay, how much time is this actually going to take me to complete? And then thinking of a study, the study schedule that we created, what part, what chunk in my week can I actually successfully complete that task based on how much time I think it's going to take me, okay? So I talk with a lot of students about it's unrealistic to say you're going to complete a whole research paper in a three-hour window unless you're superwoman, which that's not going to happen. Instead, think about how can I break this assignment down a little bit over time or a little bit each day, okay? So that's actually something that I've taken into account as a professional, but something that also translates to you as a student. Okay, and I think our last question is, um, what are the best way to avoid distractions when you are working or studying? Um, and I know we talked a little bit about the distraction-free app. Um, don't study in bed again. Changing up your environment, I think, is really important. Um, what I found, um, especially even when I'm working on stuff, is changing enough every couple of weeks. So sometimes I get too into my desk, and I'll get up and, like, move out downstairs um, in Levy and start working from there. Just a change of scenery is really helpful. Um, and I think the most important one is, it's not an app, but just turn off all the notifications on your phone. Put it in airplane mode. Especially with midterms coming up, um, you guys are cramming, there's lots of stuff going on. Put your phone in airplane mode for an hour. Give yourself an hour. Give it 45 minutes of just dedicated study time, of paper writing time, and see how much you can get done. I think you would be surprised um, by how much time you guys spend on social media. I know with me checking emails and text messages and getting distracted, um, put it on airplane mode, give yourself 45 minutes and see where you're at. That's great. And one thing I want to chime in about, we don't want you to cram. Don't cram. That's, oh, yeah. the point. Sorry. That's the point of creating this study schedule is so that you are not waiting until the night before to complete an assignment. 
think about how can you break things down a little bit each day. Looking at material a little bit, a little bit each day helps with retention, but it also helps you tackle those larger research papers, those large amounts of reading material that you just have to get through. And studying a little bit each day will help with retention, we promise. So if you have any questions, certainly come talk with us. We are always open to ask any, um, errancy or any answer any of your questions. Um, yeah, and if you guys have um, suggestions for other webinar series you guys would like to see, um, feel free to email us. You can email um, the ARC, A-R-C, at Georgetown. Um, edu. You can stop by and see us either, either on main campus at Levy 355 or you can come see me downtown um, at the School of Continuing Studies in my office at C144. And that's Ashley talking. Yes, that's Ashley. Sorry. Um, Annie is here on main campus. If you have any other um, questions or want to just set up a time to meet with us and talk through, um, don't hesitate to reach out. That's what we're here for. Um, and we hope to see you guys all soon on our next webinar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, have a good night. Bye.